The hour of the time may be contacted at HOT, that's H-O-T-T, P.O. Box 940, Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, in the state of Arizona, 85925. Our phone number is 928-333-2942, and our website is www.hourofthetime.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time, and I'm still William Cooper. Tonight's broadcast is going to be pretty good, I think. We're going to examine some uh, current goings-on concerning the possibility of life in space. And to set the stage, listen very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. There is an ancient text, Egyptian, called The Ritual. And the rubric to chapter 129 of The Ritual says of the manas, and he shall be established as a star face to face with Septet, Sirius, Sophus, the dog star, and his corruptible body shall be as a god forever. To deify the human is to make a star of him. The manas himself prays, chapter 102, let me be among the stars that never rest. It is promised in chapter 164 that he shall become a star of heaven. Has orthodoxy held out to its votaries any such thrilling cosmic view of their future? The Osiris New pleads in chapter 188, May I enter into the house of his body, which behold hath become one of the starry gods, one of the thousand points of light. This would be the higher spiritual body, not the corporeal. It is said to the soul, Thou art purified with the libation of the stars. The stars that never set bear thee up. Thou enterest in the place where thy father is, where Keb, Seb is. Thou becomest a soul therein. The soul, our peppy, pleads, Make thou this peppy to be an imperishable star before thee. The acme of directness is attained in the next statement. Peppy is a star. To Tita, the soul, it is said, Thou seizest the hands of the imperishable stars. For behold, thou art one of the gods. The imperishable stars follow and minister unto thee. Pepe is addressed, Thou art the great star. Orion beareth thee on his shoulder. Thou traversest heaven with Orion. Thou sailest through the Tuat with Osiris. Again, Pepe takes his seat among you, O ye star gods of the Tuat. And finally, in grand simplicity, stands the categorical pronouncement, quote, Thy soul is a living star at the head of his brethren, end quote. For the six elementary powers were his natural brothers, of whom he, like Joseph and like Jesus, was made the chief or head from brethren. They were reduced to children when the God principle took charge and synthesized their functions. The fiery soul of intellect became king of the lower six elementary powers in man's makeup. The Christos came as the prince of peace to rise to kingship over nature's six divisions of force. Unto you a king is given, and his name shall be called the prince of peace. But the soul, ladies and gentlemen, in the mystery religions, is specifically typed by that great and brilliant emblem of what they call their divinity, the morning star. The titan who came hurtling to earth, still clinging to his stolen possession, the spiritual fire, was Lucifer, the bright and morning star.
Some of you, ladies and gentlemen, have the laid question to the many hours that I've spent disclosing the hidden religion of the mystery schools, the great brotherhoods, that full body of adepts known as the Illuminati. Why are you doing this? What has this got to do with what's happening in the world today? Ladies and gentlemen, everything, everything revolves around religion and race. Just as it has for the thousands of years that man has lived upon this earth. At one time, in the dim recesses of the ancient history of man, there was but one religion upon this earth, practiced by all men everywhere. It was the religion of the cosmos, the cosmology of the heavens. That is the heart and soul of the ancient pagan religions, which ultimately bore a philosophy which combined with science became the secret hidden religion of the ancient brotherhood. And it doesn't matter what you call it, Sebasius, Eusebius, Dionysius, Freemasonry, the Assassins, the Knights Templar, all of these orders practiced and still practice to this day this hidden mystery religion. And it is the philosophy of this mystery religion that guides the agenda of the power that is directing world events today. Don't believe it if you don't want to, folks, but I have given you so many hours of documentation and sourcing that if you followed it out, it would take you probably years to duplicate my research and to arrive at exactly the same conclusion. But there are other means of linking this together so that you can see it in action, ladies and gentlemen. In action. Played out before your eyes in a drama, a stage play for the great numbers of people on this earth to keep their guys fixed to keep them hypnotized, to provide a great, gigantic welfare project on the scale of the ancient pyramid building. And the ultimate goal is to make the earth look very small, to present the people of the world with an external threat to this earth, a superior race from some other planet, vastly superior to us in intellect, philosophy, and technology, in order to cause the dissolution of nation-states, the dissolution of all existing religions, and the formation of the world totalitarian socialist government. NASA is one of the main instruments of this deception. And if you study NASA from its beginning all the way up to the present day, and if you are a student of the ancient mystery religions of antiquity, you will see parallels and anniversary dates that coincide sometimes to the moment. You will see events that take place here on Earth, on the Moon, on the Mars, and around other planets, on the exact same latitude and longitudinal points on those planets where certain things have taken place here in the past and take place now in the present. If you studied the Apollo space program 
you must have noticed the reference to the ancient gods Apollo if you studied the emblem of the Apollo space program especially the first emblem ladies and gentlemen you noticed that it carried on its crest the symbol of Apollo who was the Sun also known as Osiris the moon Isis in the center you will see the constellation of Orion in its center are arrayed in the exact position the three pyramids of Giza in Egypt and the earth of course represents the full body of initiates known as Horus you will notice that the spacecraft that left this earth and suffered the symbolic death and the resurrection from the ashes was Apollo 13 13 being the number of death and resurrection the number of the Phoenix rising from the ashes oh yes ladies and gentlemen oh yes and now we have a man <clears throat> named Richard Hoagland who knows that most of the NASA photographs and videotapes have been faked this has been brought to his attention by many of us he has ignored this obvious evidence and continues to use as the only evidence in his possession for the existence of life on other planets NASA photographs if one has been proven to be faked then they are all in question ladies and gentlemen but so many have been proven to be faked that none of them can ever be used as evidence for anything but what is the goal of Mr. Hoagland a regular guest on the Art B.S. Bell show which many of you listen to I don't know if you listen to it out of ignorance or because it's entertaining or because you have this morbid curiosity to listen to the patently absurd, the ludicrous, the insane. But nevertheless you do and I know that many of you enjoy it because I get letters from you talking about how much you enjoy it and that's okay, you know I believe in freedom and I admonish you to listen to everyone, read everything believe absolutely nothing unless you can prove it in your own right but what is the gist of this what is the agenda ladies and gentlemen I'm about to impart that to you now but first I must lay some groundwork many years ago when I was with the Office of Naval Intelligence ladies and gentlemen I saw a document and I disclosed this in 1988 that said that there were alien or extraterrestrial artifacts on the moon and Mars and that this had been disclosed by our space program I knew what some of those artifacts would be before they were ever even supposedly discovered by by others you see because I saw this information in 1972 some of it in 1971 as a matter of fact and so I knew that sooner or later someone was going to come forward with a photograph that showed a face on Mars and pyramids on Mars and on the moon and by studying the pictures released by NASA and NASA publications I was able to find many of these objects long before anyone ever talked about them and then along came a book We claimed we never went to the moon I read that book and began looking at the evidence presented in that book and lo and behold the man was right if we went to the moon ladies and gentlemen it was not in the Apollo space program for it was impossible could not have been done and any good student in high school science and I'm talking high school science ladies and gentlemen freshman sophomore year 
can prove that nobody went to the moon in the Apollo space program. It is that easy. So what is this all about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they could not present us with a believable external threat to this earth in the form of an extraterrestrial intelligence vastly superior to us if we in our technological development could not even visit our own satellite. So one reason was to convince the people of the world that we could travel to the moon and if we could travel to the moon other intelligent life from elsewhere in this solar system or the universe could travel to this earth. For this is an old plan of the Illuminati. John Dewey said at a dinner for Viscount Ishii and the Japanese Imperial Delegation in 1917 in New York City and The exact quote is in my book, Behold a Pale Horse, in the appendix. I wrote the book the latter five years of the 80s and published it in 1991, actually December of 1990, but they didn't think that it was going to come off the presses until January of 1991, so the copyright date inside is 1991. But it doesn't matter, it's just a month. John Dewey said, Someone once told me that the best way to end wars forever and unite all humanity on this earth in a world government would be if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet. That's what he said, ladies and gentlemen, in 1917. And that's at least how old this hypothesis is or I should say this plan to deceive the world. It was tested in 1938 with the broadcast of Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater's War of the Worlds to present a hoax to find out if it was believable, if the populace would fall for it, and they did. In all of the towns and cities that heard this broadcast, people were terrified. They went outside with shotguns and rifles to look for the alien tripods so that they could shoot them before they destroyed their cities and their families and their industries. In one city, Grover's Mill, they literally, ladies and gentlemen, the citizenry, forgot the geography and the construction of their own city and they shot their own water tower to pieces, thinking that it was one of these giant tripods. In New York City, the next morning the stock market fell precipitously. Some people committed suicide. It was a night of terror. And Congress passed a law making it illegal to do that again on radio. So this is not something that I just dreamed up out of the blue, ladies and gentlemen. It is a true agenda. It is happening. It is being brought about by the Illuminati, and in their typical fashion, they laugh at us, and they use their symbology of the mystery religions, anniversary dates, geological points and locations of monuments that are meaningful to them in all of this. There's a photograph in the House of Temple, the House of the Temple of the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of the Southern Jurisdiction of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C. In the foyer as you walk in you will see a huge photograph 
with Neil Armstrong on the moon, holding in front of his spacesuit the Masonic apron. At the time of the Apollo space program, ladies and gentlemen, the head of NASA was a Mr. Kleindienst. It was a reward for his deception on the world. He was, ladies and gentlemen, promoted to the Supreme Grand Inspector General of the 33rd degree of the Southern Jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. He holds that post today. Everything that NASA did was connected to the symbology of the ancient mystery religions of Babylon, Egypt, Greece, India, and many others. It has meaning, ladies and gentlemen, and their purpose is to connect the constellation Orion with the monuments known as the pyramids in Giza in Egypt, pyramids on the moon, and pyramids on Mars. What they're going to tell you is that Mars was populated by an ancient race who destroyed their planet in warfare and had to live underground because of the consequences of these terrible calamities that they visited upon themselves. And at some point in our ancient history they came to this earth and populated the earth with the survivors of that cataclysm and that they bred with early man and the human race was the result of that mixture. The different races being different levels of interbreeding with this extraterrestrial life and the what they call the useless eaters or what they call the backward races are the as yet unevolved or undeveloped unbred humans. Sounds far-fetched, doesn't it? Well, you just keep your eyes and ears open, ladies and gentlemen, because that is the thrust of all that you're going to hear regarding extraterrestrial life, outer space. And you can watch for the Pathfinder, this little phony robot that's supposed to be running around on Mars to disclose evidence of life on Mars and ancient artifacts, which will be forthcoming momentarily. They have already diluted a great percentage of the population with a so-called Martian meteorite that somebody discovered in a bog in Antarctica, or, or the, uh, yes it was, Antarctica. And they held a great press conference. And they spoke initially for about an hour talking about this meteorite, and they were very careful to say that there was no life in the meteorite. And what they found in the ever in the meteorite was probably not life, and that it could have been something that got in the meteorite when it landed here on Earth. And then after that, after they told everybody the truth, they spent several hours after that telling you the lie. As they went down the table and one by one they talked about how wonderful it was that they had found evidence of life on Mars after having disclosed to the world for an hour that there was no life in this meteorite, that it had never been life, that there was no evidence that it was ever life. And I have it on tape, folks. It was a joke, a great joke. And then in the next day, the newspapers around the world picked it up and the headlines blared. Meteorite discloses evidence of life on Mars. And then there was column after column after column of how this meteorite proved that there is life other than humans in this solar system and that they lived on Mars. And then some newspapers here in this United States 
began to propose that the meteorite brought life from Mars to Earth and we were all descendants of the ancient Martians. And not too long ago, a very famous person made the statement that we are all Martians. I don't know how many of you heard that. I'm not going to tell you who it is right now tonight, but on one of these Friday nights I will. For we're going to delve deeply into all of this. We're going to reach down in the bottom of the pond and stir the sludge off the bottom. We're going to cause a current that will bring it up to the top and bear it to the light of day so that we can all look at it and see what it says. For the thrust of this is to destroy religion, and in specific the Christian religion, and any other religion that believes that man was created here on this earth by God. For they're going to say that these Martians created us by interbreeding with backward, unevolved animals here on this earth. And they're going to point to the place in Genesis where it talks about the Nephilim, or the gods interbreeding with people here on this earth, produced a race of giants and other things undiscussed. And we will, one of these Friday nights, quote from Genesis and tie all of this together. But tonight is just to acquaint you. And I've been telling you ever since, every year, I've done many broadcasts on this. I have made predictions that have come true just like clockwork. Right on the money. <laughs> I told you years ago that there will come a day when they will claim that there is life on one of the moons of Jupiter, Europa. I even named the moon, ladies and gentlemen. And lo and behold, that is exactly what happened within the last year. Now they are going to tie, they are going to tie these supposed alien artifacts the only proof of their existence being NASA photographs, <laughs> which has been discredited as a body of evidence, to the ancient religions of Egypt. The movie Stargate planted that idea in the subconscious mind of the people who watched it. There have been other movies along the same order. And... Uh, They've been bandering that term Stargate around quite a bit, haven't they? Haven't they, ladies and gentlemen? For those of you who listen to the Art B.S. Bell show, you've heard quite a bit about Stargate as a project. You've heard uh, quite a few of these phony remote viewers telling you what they saw out there and coming catastrophes and all kinds of blathering nonsense. And many people listen to it and believe it. Did you know that Jack Parsons, one of the founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of the California Institute of Technology, was a high-level member of the Order of the Golden Dawn. Did you know that most of the scientists at the Jet Propulsion Lab were also members? Did you know that all of these people held birthday parties each year on the anniversary of the birthday of Aleister Crowley, one of the most highly degreed adepts of the Illuminati? who practiced black magic and claimed that he was the Antichrist. Did you know that uh, 
Jacques Vallée, one of the so-called premier scientists who are objectively looking at the UFO question, used to attend those meetings also. We have a photograph of Jacques Vallée sitting partly in light, partly in darkness, with his hand arranged around his eye so that his eye is in a triangle formed by his fingers, an inverted triangle. Those of you who have listened to my broadcast on symbology understand the significance of that. He was laughing at you. And at the same time, he was revealing his true identity to his brothers. At the highest levels of the fraternal organization. All of these organizations, ladies and gentlemen, including the highest levels of the bureaucracy of all of the different agencies of government, are in the hands of the Illuminati today. They are socialists. Their ultimate goal is a world much like Hitler envisioned. And Hitler pulled the same cons, ladies and gentlemen. You see, the new age is not new. There was a new age before this new age, back in the 30s, which rose to prominence with Hitler. All of the SS officers had to prove, I forget how many exact generations of pure Aryan blood, but they had to prove that. Then they were shipped off to a castle, replete with the trappings of the mystery religion, where they were indoctrinated into the order of the Illuminati. What is happening today, ladies and gentlemen, is very much the same thing that happened in Nazi Germany. The New World Order is going to be more like what Hitler envisioned than anything that Karl Marx ever dreamed about. Although Karl Marx was also a socialist. Karl Marx was a rabid racist. He was a Jew-hating Jew. He hated Jews and blacks and anybody else. In his writings, he made no secret that he was a racist. That socialism breeds racism. And I look around and I see all of these people, these blacks, Hispanics, Asians, all of these people who buy into the myth that socialism is going to liberate them. Socialism is going to re-enslave them. And it breaks my heart to work so hard to keep them free, only to see them working so hard to chain themselves once again. Did you know that Jesse Jackson is a Freemason? This man who claims that he abhors racism belongs to the Prince Hall Lodge, to an order that does not allow black men in the white lodges of Freemasonry and has not in its history up until today where a few, very select few token blacks have been allowed in a very few select lodges in order to say to the world, see, we're not racist. And the blacks have their own lodges called the Prince Hall Lodges. And the Jews have their own lodge called B'nai B'rith. And the Orientals have their own lodges called the Triads. All of the same order, ladies and gentlemen. All putting forth the myth that they're going to create a world where all people can get along and live together and there will be no racism and no enslavement and no muggings and no robbings. And the space program is one of the methods that they are using to bring this about. 
How many of you have been watching the Pathfinder? <laughs> Pathfinder, that ought to tell you something. It's going to discover the path to the New World Order. It's going to present you with what the world will be told is proof that extraterrestrial life either does exist now on Mars or has existed there in the past. For how can the Christian religion survive, ladies and gentlemen, except in the heart and the soul of the theological institutions where they already know all of this stuff? How can Christianity or any other religion survive when the world is presented with what they will believe to be proof that life on this earth was not created by God but by some extraterrestrial advanced race from some other world? and that we have been owned by them and shepherded in our existence all through the history of the world. And that's the true purpose of the UFOs, flying saucers, and abduction reports, which are truly the end result of some very sophisticated mind control experimentation. The technology exists, ladies and gentlemen. I have seen it myself. It is owned and operated by the United States government and probably several other governments on this earth. I have filmed these things in the sky. I have watched them come in and out of secret test sites owned and controlled by the United States government. I have spoken to people who have worked on these projects in secret. I can never reveal their names. I can only tell you some of what they have told me because to tell much more would begin to identify those people and then they would disappear from the face of this earth for telling me these things. It is truly marvelous technology, but it does not belong to extraterrestrials of any kind from anywhere. And if you really studied the development of technology and the fact that anything that could have been valuable as a method of controlling humanity has always disappeared behind the veil of national security. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the U-2 was flying many, many years before anybody knew that it existed? And before anybody even knew that it existed, the SR-71, the Blackbird, was flying. Before you even knew about the U-2, did you know that stealth aircraft were developed long, long, long before you ever heard of the stealth fighter of the B-2 bomber? Did you know that those aircraft were in the air flying years and years before the public ever even had an inkling that they existed? You have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you right now that whatever you perceive to be the state of the art of technology, any technology in the civilian sector, in the secret, ladies and gentlemen, they are at least, very bare minimum, 50 to 100 years ahead beyond what you can even imagine. You're going to say, well, look at all the technology that came out of the space program. They must have gone to the moon. No, ladies and gentlemen. That technology did not come from putting men on the moon. It came from the secret black projects into the space program and then out into the public sector as the only way that they could do it without tipping their hand that they've had these things for many, many, many years. And you should see the way they use it. I can remember when I was a young boy, ladies and gentlemen, a young boy. I was born in 1943. In 1947, the supposed Roswell crash occurred. Before then, my father brought home to me something that looked like thin tinfoil, a sheet of it. I remember it just like it was yesterday. And so do many other people remember this substance. It was nothing new. 
It didn't come from alien technology, and it sure didn't come from any crash at Roswell, because this was before Roswell. My father brought it home and gave it to me. And I could crumple it up into a little ball, put it on the table, and it would straighten itself out just as if it had never been crumpled at all without even a wrinkle in it. There are a lot of other things you need to understand. I'm not quite sure I know how to tell them all to you. But back in the 50s, they were working on atomic-powered aircraft, ladies and gentlemen. Atomic-powered aircraft, you say. Yes, that's correct. Well, how could they power atomic aircraft? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really know. Because I know that atomic power produces heat. Heat can be used to create steam, and steam can be used to power an engine or make something turn and revolve. But it cannot make a jet exhaust because you couldn't carry enough water <laughs> to fly it very far. But I know that they made them, and I know that they flew them, And they may still be flying them. Nobody knows what kind of power plant propels these flying disks and egg-shaped things and round glowing balls that float through the sky that come in and out of secret test sites owned and controlled by the United States government. In Nevada and Utah and some other places that will go unnamed for the time being. Colorado is one. New Mexico. Arizona, yes, Arizona. Why do all these things occur in the West? Because, ladies and gentlemen, in those days in this country when they were looking for places to build this technology and keep it secret from the American population and from the world at large, this was the only place where there were vast expanses of land that you could cross for days and days and days and never see another living soul. And that should be obvious to you. That's why most of the sightings of these things have always been in the West. Not all, but most. There were certain things that the alchemists had as their goal, ladies and gentlemen. One was to change matter into something else. They did that when they dropped the atomic bomb. They called it the Trinity Site. Not for the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but for Osiris, Isis, and Horus the meaning of which you have not the slightest conception, except for those who have been listening to all my broadcasts on the symbology of the mysteries. Now, ladies and gentlemen, starting Monday, I'm going to be elaborating again on the lost light, the lost word, the true hidden meaning of the mystery schools, the adepts known as the Illuminati. Those people who are propelling the world in the direction they wish it to go. When you learn all of this and you understand it, you look around at the, at the vast population who knows absolutely nothing of the power that directs their future. All of a sudden you realize and you understand exactly why they call us cattle. And then you even begin to understand how 
They could cause wars and kill tremendous numbers of people to achieve a certain goal and not even feel the slightest pangs of conscience. For just as we would kill a cow to provide meat for our table, ladies and gentlemen, they look upon the normal human being as nothing more than an animal because they cannot use the brains of the intellect that God gave them in their estimation. They believe that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals that have no intelligence, and such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Think about that. Think about it. Because that is truly what they believe about you. And in their religion that denies the existence of Jesus Christ, or even of a God, really, the closest they get to God is a sort of a pantheism. That everything is hooked together. You've heard it in the New Age movement. As above, so below. If you step on an ant, it does something to somewhere on the moon. <laughs> that kind of thinking. And the truth is, no matter how much you believe in whatever it is that you believe, not one single one of us is ever going to know until we die. That's why they call it religion. It's based upon pure faith. Science surpasses religion only by its insistence that nothing can be called fact, <laughs> nothing can be believed unless it can be proven to do the same thing under the same circumstances every time that it's attempted in the laboratory. That's called the scientific method, ladies and gentlemen. But scientists have discovered that you can do it the same way, with the same ingredients, over and over and over again for five million times, and then for some unexplained reason, the next time it will not work. And so science says there are no facts, only hypotheses, based upon... things that they can say are known, are the fact that they can repeat this thing over and over again so many times. But the heart and soul of everything that is happening, ladies and gentlemen, in the world today, the driving force behind it is an ancient, secret religion that has as one of its tenets that there is a superior race. Not superior because God said that they were superior, that God was pleased with them and made them his chosen people. And don't misunderstand me, folks. I'm not talking about Jews, I'm talking about the collective body of the Anglo-Aryan race that calls itself the Illuminati. Their exoteric version of this religion is British Israelism, Zionism. There are many more Zionists that are Christians than are Jews. And most Jews don't buy into any of this baloney, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even have the slightest idea what I'm talking about any more than most of you do. George Bush is one of these people. George Bush is not a Jew. The Pope is one of these people. The Pope is not a Jew. So don't, uh, don't compound the problem by thinking that you know 
exactly what it is that I'm talking about because I can assure you that you don't. NASA is a great part of this deception. NASA has been made up by all different kinds of people of all professed different religions. The truth is, is that none of these people really be believe in any religion. When they go to church or they profess a religion, it's because they have to do it to get along in the community or to get along with their wife or their relatives or somebody. Watch the space program. Watch the pictures brought back by the Pathfinder. And folks, if you really study that little thing and use your head and study all of those photographs, <laughs> you're going to be amazed. You're going to be absolutely dumbfounded. And uh, then you may become dangerous, like me. <laughs> Won't that be a trip if all of a sudden we had several million dangerous radio hosts in this country, all broadcasting on low-power transmitters, driving Rex Jensen completely out of his mind? I'm going to try to hook up about five other people in this valley with low-power transmitters and... Uh, Rex Johnson will probably be seen after that sitting on a park bench blubbering in his milk yelling about three year prison terms and ten thousand dollar fines <laughs> absolutely incredible ladies and gentlemen good night don't miss Monday night and God bless each and every single one of you I wonder what all of you really thought George Bush was talking about when he talked about the thousand points of life. And wasn't it Georgie Boy who, a Republican, supposed conservative, introduce the term to this generation, New World Order, a term often used by Hitler and his cronies, a term used throughout the ages by every despot that's ever come along. What did you think he was talking about? 